Hi, my name is Arkady, and this video is about getting motion vectors out of Maya's mental ray. Uh, right now there are different methods to do this. Uh, one of the oldest and most well-known one is uh, using a shader called LN2DMV. So we'll start with that. Here's the link to the page where you can download this shader. Uh, choose the operation system you need. In my case, it's Windows 64-bit, and download the shader. Uh, then follow this link and download the Maya files. Installation is pretty simple. We've got these two archives. Let's start with Maya files. Uh, first, go to the Maya preference directory. Uh, by default, it's located in My Documents Maya, and in Icons folder, put XPM file. Uh, then in Scripts folder, put Mel file. Uh, now go to the Maya installation directory, Mental Ray folder, include and put a my file there. And from another archive, put DLL file into lib folder. That's it. We don't need them anymore. Now we need to restart Maya. Uh, first, let's check if we have mental ray plugin loaded. Maya to MR MLL. Yes, it is loaded. Now in Hypershade, uh, in Create Mental Ray Nodes Materials, we've got LM2DMV shader. It doesn't have a lot of options and uh, We'll leave them right now as they are. So, how to make it work? First of all, let's make a quick and simple scene with a moving sphere. That's our main beauty render. To get motion vectors, we need to assign a lambda DMV shader to this sphere. And also, we need to tell Maya to calculate motion data between the frames. To do that, we need to go to the Render Settings, Mental Ray Quality tab, and enable Motion Blur. We've got two options here. No deformation calculates animation of transforms only, like this sphere. And full mode uh, also takes into consideration deformations, for example, skinned characters, deformers, clothes, and so on. Actually, I found no big difference in speed between these two. So, if you have a large scene with uh, a lot of objects and you don't really remember if you have any deformations at all, uh, or you have objects you are not sure about, like maybe particles or instancers, just use full mode. Not to produce any blurring, but still calculate motion data, we need to set shutter open and uh, shutter close attributes to the same value. Uh, so it uh, opens and then closes immediately. Also, we need to make sure that we are sampling the motion in the beginning of the frame, so that motion vectors render would match our beauty render. Zero is the beginning of the frame, and one is uh, the end of it. Obviously, we need to set them both to zero then. Uh, but you'll find uh, that uh, a lot of people use 0 0.5 values here. Uh, that works because we have an additional attribute located in Motion Offsets folder called Motion Back Offset. Even if it's disabled, like right now, it still has an effect on shutter settings. A uh, value of 0 0.5 uh, shifts shutter half a frame back, 
so that's why setting them to 0.5 by default samples motion at the beginning of the frame, not the middle. Let's try this out. I forgot to keep the beauty render, so let's do that quickly again. Beauty render. And motion vectors. And they do match. Let's check alpha. So, values of 0 0.5 for shutter open, close and motion back offset actually works. Uh, in some certain situations, I've noticed that uh, these values can actually produce a little bit of shifting and uh, motion vectors uh, won't match PG render any longer. Uh, so, the better way to go is to set shutter open and close to the value of zero. Uh, now we need to disable motion back offset, zero it out, like that. But uh, currently uh, there is some sort of a bug in Maya. Uh, these attributes don't understand uh, values of zero. We need to give it something really close to zero, but higher than that. Let's add a one to the end of each one. And re-render. Now we've got the same result. Still matching. So that's the more precise way to calculate motion. Uh, since Maya 2009, we've got another, even more useful option, which is located in Options tab, uh, Force Motion Vector Computation checkbox. To use it, we need to enable that, and then we can turn Motion Blur off. But we still need to keep an eye on this motion back offset attribute because it has an effect on the checkbox version also. So re render, same result. Matching. This checkbox is uh, much easier to use, and in certain more advanced situations like rendering passes. It's faster. So, to quickly recap this process, let's start a new scene. Same moving sphere. Beauty render. And assign the new LM to DMV shader and to make it work we need to set motion back offset to zero and turn on force motion vector computation. That's it.